all right guys so um this is a revision tutorial about how to uh, choose backing chords how to um, select backing chords to accompany a single line melody uh, which is one of your learning outcomes for junior cycle and um, just a quick uh, background to this before we get into it um at the time that i'm making this video um we're still unclear as to how this might be uh, actually asked of you at junior cycle level so what i'm doing here is i'm taking um uh, an old kind of junior certificate style question here and i'm going to show you how to select backing chords for it and we've done this in class already when we were doing um we were writing jingles and composing uh soundtracks and so on and um, it's just a handy little reference uh if you want to look back and do it okay so um what I'm doing here is I'm taking a, a short and eight bar piece of music. This is a pretty straightforward example here. Uh, a piece called The Sun Shines on the Mountain, which is a Swedish folk song. Um, it's a, as again, it is quite an easy one. This, this, this one is just a kind of a basic example of how to work through it. Okay. So um, just the key things and how to work, uh, how to, how to work your way through this. First of all, every empty box has to have a chord uh, assigned to it. You're always going to try and finish your last box with a chord of one. Um, and what I am going to stress to you that um, as you work your way through this example, each chord will probably have more than one option available to it. Uh, so don't actually like as you're going through it, you'll see like in, in, in the second bar here, you might find this three chords might work here. We're just going to pencil in the three chords that might work above it. Um, but at the very end, if you can see that the chord of one works at the end, it should. It, in fact, I can say to you now it will um, just write in the chord of one straight at the end, which is the chord of F. And you know where possible, uh, finish on the, on five one, a perfect cadence at the end, or four one, which whichever they're they're good strong ones to finish on. But I wouldn't necessarily put in the chord of five automatically at the start. Uh, sorry, uh, before you before you work through the example, um, because there is there is a reason something could catch you out there later on. I'll explain that when we get there. Um, but always chord one at the end. Don't use the same chord twice in a row. And in the old junior cert, uh, I was like you were told not to do that. Um. And primary chords, try to stick as closely to primary chords as you can. The primary chords are chord one, chord four, and chord five. Okay. Um, you don't have to. There are, there, there are times when chords outside of those might work. Um, just forget, don't forget not to use chord three and chord seven. So here's the process. I kind of referred to some of this already. First thing is you have to establish the key signature. So I'm going to flick between this page here and the, the previous page. Um, the, the example. So establish the key signature. The key signature here has one flat. That means it's either in the key of F major or in the key of D minor. You're not going to be asked or expected to know the minor key at this level. So it's F, F major. One flat is F major. So we know that. Write out a chord grid. Okay, so you'll see on the next page and this page up here, I've actually written out a chord grid. Okay, let's come back to that in a second. Um, a chord grid. And I also, there is another tutorial. If you want to revise how to write out a chord grid, I have another tutorial for this up on the um, on the YouTube page. Always write out this chord grid. I know some of you, some of you find this very difficult. I, I get that. Some of you find it easy. Don't care how easy you, you find this or how good you are at writing, um, yeah, choosing backing chords. Always, always, always write a uh, chord grid. Um, step three, establish the options you have at each chord change before committing to a chord. What I mean by that is, and you're going to see me doing this now in a moment, if you come to the, if, as you as you look at your empty boxes there, um, each chord, each box might have three options available to it. Just pencil in the different chords that you can use at a particular box. And then at the end, you come back and make your final choices because the chords that are either side of the box you're choosing at any one time will influence the decision you make. Always end on chord one. I've gone through that already. Try to end at uh, four one or five one as your final cadence. Primary chords, which is chords one, chords four, chords five, are the strongest chords to use and the safest chords to use. Um, there, there will be times where other chords outside of those will work and will work very, very well. I'm not saying not to use, for example, the chord of two or the chord of six. Now, we are staying away from three and seven. Um, you know, but if, if you can use a primary chord, you're absolutely safe there. That said, any accurate chord, any chord that's suitable and works will get full marks. If this question gets marked the same way it's used to mark the junior cert, but we don't know that yet. And then finally, don't use the same chord twice in succession. Don't use the same chord twice in a row. Okay, so there we go. Establish the key. So this piece is in the key of F major. Uh, there are a few ways to establish the key. The main way is to just look at the key signature. Now, now in, in fairness, guys, at junior cert level, junior cycle level, 
just know your key signatures again this is one of these things i come back to there are certain things at junior cycle level you just have to know you must know those five key signatures c major g major f major b flat major and d major if you don't know those if you don't learn those and memorize those key signatures you can't do this straightforward okay and um, write out your chord grid and um, again now as I've, I've made it i've mentioned it here always make a chord grid no matter how confident you are at choosing backing chords take your time doing it as well as making your chord grid uh sorry when you're making your chord grid as a small mistake can actually have disastrous consequences here it can make a whole piece sound awful um if you don't write the information out so again i have another tutorial on this uh, in the YouTube channel, so I'm not going to get into this here. Just a couple of things to remind. I'm actually going to use the names of the chords here as opposed to the chord numbers when I'm picking my chords in um uh the, the, the in the actual exercise itself. Um, normally you you you're 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 given the choice uh, of using either Roman numerals or the chord names themselves, but don't mix them. So don't say, for example, if let's say your your last chord, your your final cadence is a perfect cadence five one, don't write V followed for the second last chord and F then as the last chord. Don't mix them. So stick to one method, okay? Um don't use chord three or chord seven. Um the sometimes chord three can actually work quite nicely and so on, but you're not expected to be able to do them at this time. Um so please don't find ways of making the chord of seven fit into your, your backing chords. It won't be that complicated okay um if you're using roman numerals make sure remember use capitals for one four and five your primary chords small uh, roman numerals for two and six and uh don't use quarter seven as the diminished chord and um, so you use small roman numerals for two and six because they're minors and if you're using the system which i'm going to use of using the the letters you absolutely must make sure that for the minor chords you've got the small m after it uh, if you go to use the chord of G minor and just write G, it's the wrong chord. And not only is it the wrong chord, it's going to sound, it's not going to sound good. And you don't get any kind of sympathy marks for getting close to it. It's just the wrong chord. It's black and white here, guys. Um, likewise, after, like for the chord of F major, so the chord, the major chord, so one, four, five, don't put an M after those. Uh, leave them just as the letter names. Okay. So um, I just at this point here, I'm just going to ask you probably the best thing here is to pause this and, and, and read it in your own time. But just establish your options at each chord change. So to do this, have a look at the notes on the main beats of the bar. So if the piece is in 4-4, four, four, check what notes are on beats 1, 2, 3 and 4. If it's in 3-4, now I know these are written as fractions there. Don't forget they're not fractions. If it is in 3-4, check what notes are on beats 1, 2 and 3. It's unlikely to be in 6-8 time. But if it is, look at the notes on the first and fourth quaver of each bar, or the first dotted crotchet and the second dotted crotchet. The notes in between the beat mainly are, sorry, they're usually passing notes, the notes in between the, the main beats of the bar. And you can ignore these a lot of the time. They're just passing notes to link the melody together. Ideally, all of the notes on the main beats should fit into a chord from your grid, but we rarely get this lucky. So it would be great if, like, you know, in the first bar, all the, the notes were from chord one. Uh, in the next bar, all the notes were from four. The next one, five, and so on. It just, just doesn't happen. But there will probably be a bar in there somewhere where all the notes will fit into one chord and it'd be really obvious what chord you're going to use and um, establish what note what chord sorry has the most notes in common with each empty chord box but remember to check what chords surround the current one as this will influence your chord choice work through your options for each empty box but only choose your chords at the end okay so what i've done here is um i, I i've you can see what i've done now this is this would be pencil i would be using obviously in it and i would have i would generally kind of write my chord grid somewhere just along the top here okay um so you can see for example when i get to the second bar so this first empty box now the the, the empty box relates to all the notes from directly underneath the empty box to where the next empty bo box starts so these three notes here they're the notes that we're, we're going to have to harmonize with a chord in this box here. So we've got the notes D, E and F. So you look at your, um, your, your, your chord map. Now, first of all, we can't use F because F was the last chord there. And remember, we can't use the uh, same chord twice in a row. And there's only one chord note from the chord of F here. That's an, uh, the F itself. So when the majority of the, the notes aren't in a particular chord, you can discard it. Um, so G minor has the notes D and uh, and F. So that could work nicely. Um, the chord of B flat has two notes as well. And the chord is, is so we have um, F and uh, and D. And then the chord of D minor uh, also has, has a D and an F. So 
any of those three chords will work quite well so just give your options there um again what sticks out for me though is even though the minor chords mean nice b flat is a primary chord it's a chord of four here so you know just just keep that in your mind and uh, the next one we have c d and e so we've got two notes in uh, the chord of c there we have c and e um i've written down that the chord of f could work there uh, i don't know why i did only the, the note c is the only one that will work there uh, from the chord of f so it's really going to be the chord of c there that we use um then the next bar we've got an f and an a which uh, are both of those notes are in the chord of f and in the chord of d minor uh so it's going to be one of those uh, then the next one now watch out here only one note relates to this chord box here these next two notes in the bar uh, or you have a different box above them. So for this B flat here, okay, uh, we could have the chord of G minor, or we can have B flat. They're the, 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 they're the two chords that have B flat in them. Uh, and then the next one, we have a G. So that could be the chord of G minor, B flat, or C, as the note G is in all three of those chords. Okay, but again, just alarm bells to start ringing out here. You know, if you use G minor here, you won't be able to use G minor there. If you use B flat here, you won't be able to use B flat here. Okay, so these are the things you have to think of. Okay, then we have the note A, just the note A. Okay, so that could be the chord of one, which is F. It could also be the chord of six, which is uh, D minor. You do, you will notice quite often the chord of one and six. Like very often, you have the option of using chord one or chord six in the same box. They are related to each other. Uh, the chord of six is the relative minor of the chord of one so there, there is a reason for it and again watch out here when you get to the next bar we've got an f so that could be the chord of f or the chord of d minor we have the same options for this box as we do for this box so just be careful that you don't use the same chord twice in a row um then here we have now this if you look at it here g c e we have all three of those notes th those are the three notes from the chord of c you're not even going to look at any other options there and to really reinforce that home the chord of c in the key of f is chord five and because we want we want to if possible end two five sorry we want to end five one at the end a perfect cadence so it works c and f there okay so here's the chord i chose we just have a look here and um, so i chose b flat out of these three chords again why because it's a primary chord okay um i don't have to i could have gone with g minor and i could have done, gone with d minor there d minor like the chord of one going to chord six is a lovely chord change uh but b flat very safe next one i went with chord five because it's again the primary chord so we have the chord of note c and e there and then i ended this bar here in the chord of f uh, this line rather in the chord of f which is the chord of one i'm sometimes wary of doing that using the chord of one halfway through a piece makes it sound a little bit finished you know it almost like the song is over there but i just thought that you know it just sounded a bit stronger than ending it on a d minor there next bar i had the choice between g minor b flat either of them would have worked okay uh but b flat is a primary chord so i erred on the side of caution and stayed safe and use b flat there and then here i used c i had the choice between g minor b flat and c Obviously, I can't use B flat because I've just used it there now. So I could, I could only use, I could do G minor or C. Again, C being the primary chord, I went with that. Next bar, same choice. I had an F or D minor. F is the primary chord, so I chose that. Next one, I had the choice F and D minor, but because I had just used F here, can't use it again. So it had to be D minor. And again, I want to finish in 5 1. So if C works here, you use it. And you can see here C, E, and G, they are the three notes in the chord of, of 5. They're the only one that works there and again we're ending on do the tonic chord and that is the chord of one five one there you go guys hope that helps and i'm going to put up a few examples to help you work through that as well all right any questions email me let me know thanks guys